Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the arrival of the Vice Regal Party. Please join the Memorial University Chamber Choir in singing O Canada. Be seated. The Honorable Kathy Dunderdale, Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, will read the Royal Commission of Appointment.
Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom, Canada, and her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith. To Frank F. Fagan, a member of our Order of Canada, of the City of St. John's, in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Greeting. Be advised that placing special trust and confidence in your prudence, courage, loyalty, integrity, and ability, we, by and with the advice of our Privy Council for Canada, pursuant to sections 58 and 59 of the Constitution Act 1867, do hereby appoint you, Frank F. Fagan, Lieutenant Governor of the Province of Newfoundland and Labrador. During the pleasure of our Governor General of Canada, effective on the day on which you make and subscribe the oaths of allegiance and office required by Section 61 of the Constitution Act, 1867. And we do hereby direct you to carry out your duties in accordance with the powers granted to you by the Constitution Act 1867 and any other statutes. Our present commission and the annexed instructions or instructions that may from time to time be given to you by our Governor General of Canada or by our Privy Council for Canada and in accordance with such laws are in force in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. And we do hereby direct that as soon as you have made and subscribed the oaths, our present commission supersedes our commission issued under the Great Seal of Canada on January 28, 2008, appointing the Honorable John Carnell Crosby to be Lieutenant Governor of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. In testimony whereof, we have caused these, our letters, to be made patent and the great seal of Canada to be hereunto affixed. Witness, our right trusty and well-beloved David Johnson, Chancellor and Principal Companion of our Order of Canada, Chancellor and Commander of our Order of Military Merit, Chancellor and Commander of our Order of Merit of the Police Forces, Governor General, and Commander-in-Chief of Canada. At our government house in our city of Ottawa in this 27th day of February, in the year of our Lord 2013, and in the 62nd year of our reign, by command, Registry General of Canada. The Honorable J. Derek Green, Chief Justice of Newfoundland and Labrador, will administer the Oath of Allegiance and the Oaths of Office. The Oath of Allegiance. Please repeat after me. I, Frank F. Fagan, do swear. I, Frank F. Fagan, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II Queen of Canada Queen of Canada her heirs and successors her heirs and successors so help me god so help me god and the oaths of office please repeat I Frank F Fagan I Frank F Fagan shall well and truly execute shall well and truly execute the office and trust of lieutenant governor the office and trust of lieutenant governor of the province of newfoundland and labrador of the province of newfoundland and labrador and duly and impartially and duly and impartially administer justice therein administer justice therein I shall well and truly execute. I shall well and truly execute the office and trust. The office and trust of keeper of the great seal. Of keeper of the great seal. 
of Her Majesty's Province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Of Her Majesty's Province of Newfoundland and Labrador. According to the best of my knowledge and ability. According to the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. The Honorable Kevin O'Brien, Register General of Newfoundland and Labrador, will now present the Great Seal of Newfoundland and Labrador. I present the Great Seal of Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you. Into your hands, I entrust the Great Seal of Newfoundland and Labrador. The Registrar General will now read the Lieutenant Governor's proclamation. <clears throat> to all to whom the, these presents shall come, a proclamation. Whereas His Excellency the Governor General in Council by commission under the Great Seal of Canada, bearing the date the fifth day of February in the year of our Lord, 2013, in the 62nd year of Her Majesty's reign, has been pleased to appoint me to be the Lieutenant Governor in and for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador during the will and pleasure of the Governor General of Canada. Now know ye that I have thought fit to publish and make known to do hereby publish and make known that I have this day made and subscribed the oaths of allegiance and office and assumed the duties of my office as Lieutenant Governor under and in accordance with the Governor General's commission and instructions and the statutes and laws in that behalf. And I do hereby require and command that each and every person holding any office, place, employment, or function under Her Majesty in this province to continue in the execution of thereof. Of all which Her Majesty's subjects in this province and all of others whom it may concern are hereby required to take notice and to govern themselves, themselves accordingly. Given under the hand and seal of His Honor, the Lieutenant Governor of the House of Assembly, St. John's, this 19th day of March, 2013.
The Chief Justice of Newfoundland and Labrador, assisted by the Director of Protocol, will now present the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador insignia to the Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador. The Honourable Cathy Dunderdale, Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, will now swear the oath of allegiance to the Lieutenant Governor. I, Cathy Dunderdale, do swear that I will faith and true allegiance bear unto Her Most Gra Gracious Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, and to her heirs and successors. I will be true and faithful to His Honor, the Honorable Frank Fagan, as he is commissioned and appointed Lieutenant Governor over the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. I will, in the place and office of Her Majesty's Councillor of the Province, well and faithfully serve Her Said Majesty and promote the good of Her Majesty's affairs with my best advice and counsel. I will, with my best ability, defend this province from all foreign invasions and intestine insurrections. I will not countenance or conceal any plot or seditious speeches against Her Said Majesty and her heirs and successors but I will give speedy notice thereof unto his honor, the Lieutenant Governor, or to some members of his council. The secret debates of the council I will not reveal directly or indirectly, all of which I will perform to the utmost of my ability, so help me God. To mark this occasion, the Memorial University Chamber Choir will perform a musical selection. St. 
dainty nymphs and speak. Shall we play Barley Greek? Fa la 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 la. Say dainty nymphs and speak. Shall we play Barley Greek? Fa la 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 la. The Honorable Fabian Manning, Senator, will now address the assembly. Your Honour, Mrs. Fagan, Premier Dunderdale, members of the House of Assembly, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to everyone and welcome one and all to this very special occasion. It is indeed my honour and privilege to join you here today representing the Right Honourable Stephen Harper and our Federal Government. Today's occasion is not only important for those of us gathered here but it is also central to our system of parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy. The Lieutenant Governor of our province is appointed to represent our Head of State, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada. During the last year, Canadians have joined together in marking Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee, a celebration of 60 remarkable years of devoted public service that has earned her respect and affection of Canadians. The theme of service to others that has embodied Her Majesty's reign is also a key aspect entrusted in the role of Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador. Today it is heartening to see that while one man of integrity and achievement is finishing his time in our highest office, another fine Newfoundlander and Labradorian is here to succeed him. I am confident I speak for everyone here today when I say that our new Lieutenant Governor will bring the same dedication and commitment to service as he assumes his new duties. Mr. Frank Fagan, on behalf of the Government of Canada, allow me to congratulate you on being appointed Newfoundland and Labrador's 13th Lieutenant Governor. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the members of the Advisory Committee and Vice Regal Appointments for their dedicated work. Formally created last fall, this nonpartisan Advisory Committee was tasked with the search for an individual in whom the important constitutional powers of this office could be entrusted. Your Honour, your achievements, not just in the world of business in our province, but through your charitable initiatives and selfless giving, has without a doubt made a difference in the lives of many Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. To quote J.M.B. Mateau, even the smallest act of caring for another person is like a drop of water it will make ripples throughout the entire pond. Your Honour, you have a history of showing determination and dedication in working to make Newfoundland and Labrador a better place, a place that we are all so proud to call home. You have shown a deep concern for those less fortunate, and especially for those who face incredible challenges every day in their efforts just to live a normal life. All these qualities which come so natural to you speak volumes of your character, your sensitivity, and your foresight, and will play a vital role as you serve in your role as Her Majesty's representative. Congratulations once again, Your Honour, to you and your family. I wish you all the best as you accept this important role. Being fortunate enough to call the Cape Shore my home, and with the Irish blood flowing through my veins, and God only knows what else after this weekend, I would be remiss if I concluded without an Irish blessing for our new Lieutenant Governor. To you, sir. May you always have walls for the winds, a roof for the rain, hot tea beside the fire, laughter to cheer you, those who love near you, and all your heart might desire. For each petal on the shamrock, this brings a wish your way. Good health, good luck, and much happiness for today and every day. Thank you. To mark this occasion, the Memorial University Chamber Choir will perform a musical selection.
This Finnish folk song tells about the joys of nature and the promise of spring. You will, of course, forgive us for pushing the season a bit. Kathy Dunderdale, Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, will now address all assembled. Your Honours, Mr. Chief Justice and Mrs. Green, Senator, Members of the House of Assembly, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great delight today to welcome Frank and Patricia Fagan to your new roles on behalf of people throughout our province. Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are eager to meet their new Lieutenant Governor, and I know how much you are looking forward to the opportunities you will have over the next five years to engage with them. The monarchy and its vice-regal offices have changed immeasurably in recent decades. The pomp and circumstance remain very impressive, and who wouldn't be impressed by a motorcade, an honor guard, and a 15-gun artillery salute? But thanks to the leadership of the Queen, her family, 
and those who have served to represent her in recent years, the distance separating this royal institution from the people has narrowed significantly. When William and Kate toured Canada some months ago, it was abundantly clear that the connection with people was stronger, more immediate, and more vibrant than ever. I believe that you bring this to that very same down-to-earth, heartfelt concern for people and connection with them. And I am anticipating great things as you take on your new roles representing the Crown here in Newfoundland and Labrador. I could certainly join others in listing off the many accomplishments that make you eminently qualified to take on the significant responsibilities awaiting you. But instead today, let me focus on the people you will be meeting in the months and years ahead. Many of them will be young people, not quite sure how everything works in our society, but eager to learn and eager to make a difference. As you look into their eyes and engage them with genuine interest, they will feel the surge of self-confidence that comes from being respected. Some of these young people have been profoundly disadvantaged. Some have been downtrodden. Some have faced the challenges of a disability and persevered despite the hurdles in their path. By holding your gaze and shaking your hand, they will feel the surge of pride and self-worth that comes from acknowledgement of their efforts. The experience of meeting you may be well what propels them to take on even greater challenges and chalk up even greater victories. That is the magnitude of the power of your new office. You have the capacity to change lives. You will walk into communities far removed from government house where garden parties and galas have little to do with people's daily struggles. People may ask you frank questions about the relevance of the office you hold. It is in those moments of stark honesty when you will have the opportunity to leave the greatest impression and to make the greatest difference. It is in those moments that you can help people see that the institutions that define this place are not far removed from them, but intimately connected with who they are, where they live, and what they do. You are not the Queen's representative at Government House alone but also her representative in the gardens of Glovertown, in the long shadows of Gross Morn, along the rocky shoreline of Nain, and in the kitchens of Kippens. You are not above the people or apart from the people, but one with the people that your government serves. And you are not just a representative of someone else. You are also clothed in the experiences you have gathered as a family through a lifetime of work and public service. Young athletes will receive your accolades and your friendly advice with open ears because they know your advice comes from the first-hand experience of a sports-loving family. The words of encouragement and respect you speak to young entrepreneurs will sink deep because they realize you know a thing or two about running an enterprise. Community volunteers will give you a firm handshake of respect because they know you stepped up to the plate with contributions of your own and made the choice to make a difference. When you encourage others to give of their resources and their time, you will touch the conscience of those you speak to because they can see what you have done. As a couple who has known both the joys of parenting and the profound heartbreak of loss, you will be able to embrace people with empathy and compassion, just as they reach out to embrace you with heartfelt concern as Newfoundlanders and Labradorians so often do. 
Many times we wonder why we were called on to endure life's most difficult trials. I believe the silver lining in those darkest moments is that they equip us to more fully help others face the challenges that they too must endure. You are a wonderful couple, and it is truly an honor for all of us as Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to have you serve together as the Queen's representative in our communities. I am confident that Newfoundlanders and Labradorians will embrace you with open arms, not only in the grand ceremonies that celebrate and elevate their greatest accomplishments, but also in those quiet moments of one-on-one -on -one conversation when those all-important connections that unite us are made most meaningful. May you both enjoy good health and a profound sense of fulfillment as you take on your new and important role. To mark this occasion, the Memorial University Chamber Choir will perform a musical selection. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador will now address the Assembly. Chief Justice Green, Mrs. Green, Premier Dunderdale, Honorable Leaders, Members of the House of Assembly, Members of Parliament, Senators, Honoured Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. And my first words of thanks are to each of you who have joined my wife Pat and I today for my installation as the Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, our wonderful province. I want to say a special thank you to the Premier and our colleagues in cabinet, cabinet who will be, to use the traditional expression, my ministers, a term which I have to get used to, and I deeply appreciate all of the assistance that I have been given in preparing for this day and for this role. Thank you also to the officials of the Newfoundland government and the government of Canada who have worked with us and guided us as we prepare to take up these new duties. Thank you as well to the officials and the staff at Government House for all of the help you've given Pat and I as we try to settle in. Thank you, thank you to all of you. As we all know, 
Canada is a constitutional monarchy with the Queen at, Min at Westminster, the Queen of Canada, and our head of state. This past year, as you also know, is the 60th year, her Diamond Jubilee year. Now, one of my earliest memories that I have had of our Queen was the year of her coronation in 1953. I was a nine-year-old student at a, a small two-room school in Curling East in the western Newfoundland area. We marched as a group to the War Memorial site in Curling to mark the August occasion. Of course, what we children really, really treasured was that we each received a box of English toffee with Her Majesty's picture and the image of the Union Jack on the cover of that small tin of candy. And of course, we also received a commemorative medal. Like other Canadians and my fellow residents of Newfoundland and Labrador, I've always, always had felt a great respect and admiration for Her Majesty's deep devotion to her duty and to the sense of, and this sense of affection and this sense of respect has only grown uh, with tremendous work she has done over the past 60 years. I want to express also my deep appreciation to the Prime Minister and the Government of Canada who have done me the great honour in asking me to represent the Crown in Newfoundland and Labrador for the next five years or so. I do acknowledge with the greatest respect the women and the men who are elected to serve in our House of Assembly, who make our laws and who govern our province. Such a public life is a demanding life and it is only proper and fitting that those serving in the appointed roles, such as myself here, take up our duties in a place created for and in the presence of our elected representatives those men, women and those men who have been elected by the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. While I have never had the honour or the privilege to serve in this honourable house, I do admire the devotion and the courage of those who put themselves forward to work hard for what they believe will enhance the lives of the people of this province and the people who elect them. They give selflessly and they are willing to accept the critiques and judgments of those they serve and others. While I've not had the privilege of serving in public office, Pat and I have always been grateful that we've been able to serve our Newfoundland and our fellow Newfoundland and Labradorians in many other ways. For Pat, that service started in 1970 in Badger, where she started her career as an educator teaching young children who had special needs. In fact, in addition to her volunteer work, which was substantial, she has also spent her entire life working, working life teaching students with special needs at the primary, elementary and high school levels in places like Grand Falls, Windsor, Torbay and St. John's. <clears throat> For me, that service started my work life with Bell Alliance, which many of you would probably know as Avalon Telephone, where I started as a linesman uh, in uh, July 1st, 1962. Now you might be forming an image in your mind of a young man uh, with all the modern communications gear there is in a well-equipped vehicle. Well, wasn't quite like that in my case. <clears throat> there I was, 18 years old, with a cardboard suitcase, waiting by the side of the road in Middlebite. When an open back, <clears throat> open back stake body truck with a crew of men already on board came along. I was helped up into the back of the truck, and off we went as a work crew to a little community of Markland, just outside of Whitburn, to spend several weeks building a pole line and bringing telephone service, albeit magneto crank service, for the first time. This was the start of my own adventure and, uh, and falling in love in a different way because I had only ever lived in Middlebite and Cornerbrook with the people of Newfoundland and Labrador and meeting all kinds of new people, all kinds of new people. And while we have changed so much as a province, the welcome we would get and the hospitality, warmth and invitation we were showing in those days have remained true to this day wherever I've traveled. I've had the opportunity to help with the development of communications in this province with building a modern telecommunications infrastructure, helping support the province's growth and development. But even beyond these contributions, I cherish more than anything the opportunity I had to meet with thousands, thousands of Labradorians and Newfoundlanders, and in every part of this province. I felt then, as I acknowledge now, that I had a privileged position. I was incredibly fortunate to work with a company that encouraged and promoted continuing education as a key to personal success. So it was after I began my work life that I obtained working full-time and going to school part-time my undergraduate degree and later an MBA from our own Memorial University. Education is vital, absolutely vital to our future and my time at Memorial University was extremely rewarding and I know it was extremely rewarding and meaningful for Pat as well and my two sons. That's why Pat and I were so happy to endow a scholarship 
or academic excellence and community leadership under the Faculty of Medicine at Mon. Our family has a deep sense of gratitude for the quality of education that was well afforded to us at Memorial University and the opportunities that it provided for us. My company also, in <clears throat> I get the last word, also encouraged uh, employees to be active and helpful in communities in which we lived. We even have an organization in our company called the Telephone Pioneers, made up of employees, retirees, and their partners who give thousands and thousands of hours of community service each year, programs serving young families and the elderly, activities to comfort young children and teenagers in crisis, and to reward community organizations for helping others, programs supporting health, literacy, education, well-being, you name it, and the Pioneers are always there to lend a helping hand. Their motto, a great motto, is the spirit of service, which conveys the focus of serving others <clears throat> at all times. I was greatly privileged, privileged to be a founding member of the Newfoundland and Labrador Chapter 105 and to later serve as the international chair and president of the Telephone Pioneers of America at 800,000 people strong. It was the largest social industrial volunteer organization in the world at that time, and I was only one of three Canadians that had the privilege of serving in that position. I mentioned earlier the very strong feelings and connections Pat and I have for all areas of Newfoundland and Labrador. So permit me to share a bit of our family's history and you'll see why. Our roots with this province go back a long way and they spread out widely. In my case, to the mid-1700s when my forebears arrived in St. Mary's Bay from Ireland. And in Pat's family's case, in the early 1750s, where her family established in Fogo and Tilting. My father's parents, uh, Frank Fagan, and Hazel Shepherd came from Foxtrap and Lark Harbor. My mother's parents, Silas Morgan and Susan Daw, came from Seal Cove and Long Pond, although there's some argument about whether it was Seal Cove or Porter Grave. I'm not sure which. I got information from both sources. My father, late father Reginald Linton Fagan, and my mother, Gwendolyn Audrey Claris Morgan, were born and raised in Codner, and I bet you don't know where that is, and Upper Gullies, respectively, but it's in Newfoundland. I came into this world in 1944, the eldest of 12 children. <coughs> and, I, <coughs> and I've lived there in this province my entire life. <sighs> Except for the past year. <laughs> Where Pat and I spend our time in Calgary <laughs> with our youngest son, Dr. Richard Fagan. <laughs> who unsuccessfully battled cancer. <laughs> I've lived in Curling East, Kellegrews, Cornerbrook, St. John's, and Milton. This is very difficult. He was our baby. Pat was born in Montreal to Newfoundland parents, but at an early age returned to this province and grew up in Clarenville and Grand Falls. Her father's parents came from Fogo and Tilting, while her mother's parents hailed from Hodges Cove and Little Hearts Ease. Pat's father, late William Harold Dwyer, and her mother, Evelyn Olivia Martin, were born and raised in Tilting and Little Hearts Ease, respectively. And I am delighted that my mother-in-law, at 88 years young, is here with us today. And I am delighted also that my mother's three sisters, my aunts, Mark Parsons, Louise Smith, and Eva Balsam, are here as well. Welcome, ladies. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, my decision to accept the Prime Minister's invitation to serve as the Lieutenant Governor was made with considerable thought and reflection, because we were still struggling and still are. With our grief over the recent loss of our dear 25-year-old son, Richard, who had just graduated from Munn Medical School. Both Pat and I grew up in large families, in a time of large families, and not only were we brought up to help each other and share with each other, we were brought up to help and share with our neighbors. 
And that upbringing is typical of Newfoundland and Labrador and is the reason that the people of this province are known as the most generous, giving, and caring people in Canada. Pat and I have spent most of our private lives trying to help out, and we feel now that we are being offered an opportunity to continue to serve in a much broader and hopefully even more effective role. All of our predecessors have served this role with distinction. Let me thank the Honourable Jane and John Crosby, not only for their service at Government House for the past five years, but also for a lifetime of devotion and hard work on behalf of the people of this province, and indeed, the people from all over Canada. Thank you, Jane and John. Pat and I are looking forward to the years ahead with energy and anticipation, serving the people of our beautiful province. We are conscious, really conscious, of the good work of those who have preceded us, and we will do our best to continue their record of excellence. We will seek ways to expand on the important traditions of welcoming to Government House and to visiting, as the Premier said, and engaging with other people of this province. Pat and I intend to use Government House as a place to celebrate and support the achievements of our citizens, most especially in volunteerism, community and public service, as well in business and recreation. May I say we do specially wish to enhance the profile of young people who are so capable, just absolutely so capable and ready to serve. We want the home of the Lieutenant Governor to be a welcome and comforting place for our youth and for our artists and our creative professionals and indeed from citizens from every corner of this great province. I would like to thank the choir and the orchestra for being here today and providing us with such wonderful music. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. And finally, let me say that I am honored and humbled to have been provided the opportunity to serve as your Lieutenant Governor. And Pat and I, as we've always done, We'll try to serve you to the best of our ability. We thank you. After this ceremony, their honours will proceed to the lobby of Confederation Building to receive a royal salute from the Canadian Armed Forces and Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Combined Guard. The Vice Regal Salute will be played by the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Band and the 37 Combat Engineer Regiment will complete a 15-gun salute. The Lieutenant Governor will inspect the Guard of Honour. Following that inspection, all guests will be invited to leave the House of Assembly Chamber and proceed to the lobby of Confederation Building, where their honours and the Premier will receive guests. This ceremony will conclude with the singing of the Ode to Newfoundland. Please rise and remain standing for the departure of the Vice Regal and official parties. <laughs> 